Okay. RC, RC, I think till question 16, 18. Okay, 18 RCs and rest VA. Fine. Start with one. Vocabulary used in speech or writing organizes itself in seven parts of speech. Communication composed of these and organized by rules of grammar, which upon which we agree. When these rules break, confusion, misunderstanding, bad grammar, bad sentences. Example, as a mother of five with another on the way, my ironing board is always up. Okay. Nouns and verbs are indispensable parts of writing without one. Okay. No group of words can be a sentence since a sentence is by definition. A group of words containing subject of noun, capital letter, period, combined writer's head, leaps to the readers. Must you write complete sentences each time, every time? Perish the thought. If your work consists of only fragments, including cause or grammar, police aren't okay. Even if William Strunk, the Mussolini of rhetoric, recognize the delicious spillability of language. It is an old observation. He writes that the best writers sometimes disregard the rules of rhetoric. And this is certain of doing well. Okay, do best to follow the rules. Telling cause here is unless he is certain of doing well, if you don't have a rudimentary graph of how parts of speech translate into coherent sentences, how can you be certain that you're doing well? Okay. Take it any noun, verb, sentence, number rocks, explore, drain, transform mountains, flow, perfect sentences, little rational sense, even the stranger ones have a kind of poetic weight that's nice simplicity of noun work construction is useful and at the very least, least <clears throat> provide a safety net for your writing okay if you start to record the unmapped territory just remind yourself from okay okay about vocabulary and you know how sentence supposed to be let's see inferring from the passage the author could be supportive of which one of the following practices Okay, a creative writing course that focuses on how to avoid the use of rhetoric. Okay, the availability of language software that will standardize the rules of grammar. So I remember reading something like this over here. The author very clearly is mentioning must be organized by rules of grammar. So he's some, something he really, really believes in. Okay, so I shortlist two, but let's see the others. The campaign demanding that a writer's creative license. Firstly, what is, where is this word creative license coming from and breaking grammatical rules? It, it is allowed, which is also substantiated by William Strunk. So C is out. Okay. A critique of standardized rules of punctuation and capitalization. Here. So punctuation capitalization, I think, comes within the umbrella of grammar, right? So that makes option B a stronger candidate than D. So we'll stick to B. Which one of the following quotes best captures the main concern of the passage? Bad grammar produces bad sentences. Okay. And I think it's very much written over here. Bad grammar produces bad sentences, right? And we also in the last question spoke about standardization of grammar, right? Now, strunk and white simple sentences. Here. See, when you read option B, C, D, right? Now, the best part of this question is, this is there in the start, right? So usually the start tells us about the structure of the passage and the structure is about how bad grammar is producing bad sentences. And you know, what are the things that need to be done 
to make a good sentence and you know how sometimes rhetoric cannot be followed in grammar so our essential subject is grammar and when we are talking about the main concern it should address that part and not small small parts of it which is there in b c d hence we'll go with a all of the following statements can be inferred from the passage okay the subject predicate relation is same as noun verb relation take a noun put any verb okay yes similar fine right? sentences do not always have to be complete yes very much given over here must you write complete sentences no so b and a and b is out the primary purpose of grammar is to ensure that sentences remain simple so we spoke about simple sentences here but you know it was the simplicity of noun verb construction is useful you know but again you know we're talking about cautioning against a lot of simple sentences and you know what simple sentences provide but you know saying it is a primary purpose of grammar that is wrong but the primary purpose of grammar is to produce good sentences you can't add the word simple so you know c is against the thing grammar police is a metaphor for critics yes absolutely right here yeah. you called mussolini so a uh, mussolini like a dictator or a critic so you know grammar nazi what we call in normal language take any noun put it in a verb okay group of nouns becomes a sentence no we need a verb out take any vegetable put some spice you have a dish a vegetable and spice gives a dish noun and verb gives a sentence okay collection of people with same sport equipment it's a sports team not necessary now if the water boy is carrying a bat he is not the batsman right take an apple tree planted in field and you have an orchard an apple tree it should be like at least 50 100 or maybe you know at least 10 so one tree in a field cannot give you an orchard so i think any vegetable any spice any noun any verb fine so i think b works well okay thank god this is a five or a six sentence six question one right which of one of the following statements if false could be seen as supporting the arguments in the passage if false and understanding of grammar helps a writer decide whether he or she is writing well or no yeah these two yeah somewhere here and you know even these so if this is false it will not support so a is out Okay. Where is the thought that completely sentences need nouns and verbs? Yes. Must you write complete sentences each time? A noun and verb can also give incomplete sentences, but they still make sense. So, this is directly in line with what is written. Women writers not mentioned in the passage A and C is out. it has been observed that writers sometimes disregard the rules of rhetoric which is true if it falls it's not going to support us again it's given over here so b okay but studying the northern elephant seal population okay and his colleagues couldn't help but note the threat calls of males that some sites sounded different from those of males at other sites and that was the first time dialects were documented in a non human mammal all the northern elephant seals that existed today are descendants of the small herd that survived on isle of guadeloupe okay after the near extinction as the tiny population grew northern elephant seals started to recolonize former breeding locations which was precisely on the more recently colonized islands tempos of the male vocal displays with stronger differences okay compared to the founder colony test the reliability visited in california where male showed the slowest pulse rates every winter what we found is the pulse rate increase but it still remained relatively slow compared to the other colonies we had measured in the past at individual levels the pulse of the calls remains stayed the same a male would maintain vocal signature throughout his lifetime the average pulse rate was changing immigration could have been responsible okay ano nuevo came from southern rookeries Okay, forty-three percent had to reduce that the dialects were a result 
of isolation over time after breeding sites has been recolonized. For instance, the first Anna Nuvo could have had by chance calls with low pulse rates. Other sites were scientists or was it whatever happened? See, what happened to arrive first. Okay. Location continues to expand. Island kept on receiving immigrants from the original pop. The calls in all locations would have been eventually regressed to the average pulse rate of the founder colony. In the decades for scientists noted that the geographical variations were not obvious anymore. Okay. It's not what you heard now. Performing most of the statistical analysis, Shigana dialects had vanished. Okay. Calls are more complex. Complex structures, doublets, and triplets. Overall history of the transformation. The calls have been transformed, exhibiting simple composition, great individual variety, and less regional variety to complex or even less. So no, regional variety is wrong because the dialects were gone. Owing to migrations in the aftermath of the the calls have been transformed from exhibiting complex, okay, to simple. No, we went from simple to complex. So B is out. Calls have been transformed from exhibiting simple composition, less individual variety, and great regional variety to complex forms of great individual variety and less region, which makes sense. Direct is out, and it is at the same time become more complex, right? The average. Uh, no, we are not talking about three, four things that we've been talking A, B, C. So D is irrelevant. So it's to C. From the passage, it can be inferred that the call pulse rate of male northern elephant seals in the southern rookeries was faster because a large number of male north elephant seals from Ananugo might have migrated to southern rookeries to recolonize them. Okay. Large number of male north elephant seals migrated from southern rookeries to Ananugo. The male northern elephant seals of Isle of Guadalupe with faster colonies might have been the original settlers. Okay, so uh, faster pulse rate, deduced dialects, isolation. The first settlers could have had by chance calls with lower pulse rate. As I said, scientists found faster pulse rates. Opposite would have happened. Season faster pulse rates might have come. Yeah, faster pulse rates first to arrive, which is also mentioned here. So that's an inference I can make. Uh, sophisticated, no way. This comes a lot later, so it's irrelevant because this comes in the later part of the passage. All of the following can be inferred from study, except the male north elephant seals might not have exhibited dialects had they not become extinct, nearly extinct. Yeah, it's mentioned here, right? Because they were nearly extinct, they migrated, and hence we have dialects. Influx of new northern elephant seals into Anonuvo would have soon made. Uh, okay, it seems the complicated end, so I'll just skip this. Which one of the following conditions, if true, would have ensured did not disappear? Okay, besides, okay, it's again, a little confusion. Let's skip it out for the time. Okay, we left out two from the previous RC, but okay. The word anarchy comes from the Greek anarchia, contrary to authority without a ruler, derogatory sense, 1840, adopted by Pierre Joseph Broadhorn. Political and social ideology argued organization within government was both possible and desirable in the evolution of political ideas. Anarchism can be seen as an ultimate projection of both liberalism and socialism. And the differing strands of anarchist thought can be related to their emphasis on one or the other of these. Okay. Historically, anarchism arose not in the explanation, not only as an explanation between of the gulf between the rich and poor, why the poor have been obliged to fight a war, but as a radical of what went wrong, what followed the ultimate outcome of the French Revolution. It had ended not only with a reign of terror and emergence of a new a rich ruling state, Napoleon Bonaparte. Nanakas and the precursors were unique on the political left in affirming that workers and peasants grasping the chance that arose to bring an end to centuries of exploitation tyranny were inevitably betrayed by the new class of politicians. Okay. 
re-establish a centralized state power. After every revolutionary uprising, usually one at a heavy cost for ordinary populations, the new rulers had no hesitation in applying violence, terror, secret police, professional army. State is the enemy, okay? State protects privileges of the powerful. Anarchist communism, okay? Everything is controlled by local communities. We destroyed socialism in opposing the concept of any central authority. Anarchist communism and collectivist anarchism in order to say the obviously desirable freedom of an individual autonomy. Okay. There are unsurprisingly several traditional individualist anarchism, one of them deriving from conscious egoism of the German writer Max Turner. Okay, then protecting our own autonomy and associating with others for common advantage. We are promoting the good of all. These from free market liberals, absolute mistrust of American capitalism and their emphasis on mutualism. Okay. Author makes all of the following arguments. The popular perception of anarchism was espousing lawlessness and violence comes from mainstream mistrust of collectivism. The failure of the French Revolution was because of betrayal. Okay. Individual anarchism is actually constitution many see all of which focus on the autonomy of the individual. Okay. I need something that is an except, right? So this is true. And this is true. Okay. This is true here. Failure is here, right? What went wrong? The state is the enemy. Yeah. Again, this is mentioned here. Why state is the enemy right here. So if I'm able to prove BCD, I don't really need to check A. I'll mark that and move ahead. Of the following concepts, identify the set closest to the concerns of the passage. Revolution, state, protection, liberals, anarchism, state, individual freedom. So definitely we're talking about autonomy and you know individual freedom over here. And luckily, it's only option B that talks about the same. The author believes that the new ruling class of politicians betrayed the principles of the French Revolution, but does not specify in what way. Okay, here. Yeah. The new ruling class struck a deal between the, to share power, the new uh, turn to oppress that very class. Did not want to be politically strong. The new ruling of constitution who were against the destructive impact. So, share power. A newly rich ruling class. Okay. Poor have been obliged to fight. Okay. Okay, okay. So the poor fought, these came in power, and the poor are oppressed again, which is B, right? According to the passage, which what is the one idea that is common to all from the anarchism? They all they derive from the work. No, they, they don't derive from the work. Okay. His work made it non-derogatory. They all focus on the primacy of the power of the individual. So no, power of the individual means a centralized authority, which it definitely doesn't resonate with. They are all opposed to authority, centralization. Yes, absolutely. There is no idea common to all forms of anarchism. Okay, no, I mean, this is irrelevant. So. Okay. Which one of the following best expresses the similarity between American individualist anarchists and the mar free market liberals, as well as the difference between the former and the latter. Okay. Here. Mm. Protecting our own economy, uh, autonomy and associating with others for common advantage. We are promoting the good of all. These thinkers differ from the free market liberals in their absolute mistrust and emphasis. Mutualism. 
both reject the regulatory power of the state, but the former favors the people's state, while the latter favors state intervention in markets. Both prioritize individual autonomy, but the former also emphasize mutual dependence, while the latter does mutual dependence. Okay, it's sort of confusing. Founded on the moral principles of altruism, but the latter conceive of the market. Okay, mystical is something you know which we can't relate in this passage for sure. So C is out. Both are sophisticated arguments of capitalism. So morality, uh, all these things, you know, we are not discussing here altogether. So it's between A and B, both reject the regulatory power of the state, people, state, free markets. I think I'll go with A rather than B over here. <sighs> okay. Few realize that the government of China governing an empire of 60 million people during the Tang Dynasty implemented a complex financial system that recognized grains, coins, and textiles as money. Coins have certain advantages, durable, recognizable, convenient medium of exchange, marginal transactions, disadvantages, continuing shortage of copper. Okay. Only one-tenth. Okay. Understood. A coin has advantages, different sort of textile. Wear and tear, stain, faded, torn bolts of textile are less value than a brand new bolt for the mother full world had a particular value. Small pieces, okay, worthless. Greatly lessen the value. Okay, small transactions, foot or inch. Textile sum. Widespread, fewer problems with supply. String of coins, 4 kg. Okay. Grain. Okay. Official salaries were also in grain. Our own currency system. Similarities, change in front of our own eyes, cash coins or small transactions. Okay. Check debit cards, electronic banking shifts. Okay. Some young people never use cash. Okay. While discussing textiles as a currency in the tank period, the author uses the word steady and stable. For reliable supply, yes, steady supply, stable. Reliable quality, yes. Reliable measurements, yes. Given 57 by this. Reliable transportation. Um, so, we're talking about transportation for coins, but, you know, not for textiles. So, I guess, you know, this should be the answer. In the context of the passage, which one of the following can be inferred with regard to the use of currency during the Tang era? Currency that deteriorated easily was not used for official work. Currency usage was similar to that of modern times. Yeah, some similarities mentioned in the last, but let's see. Grains were the most used. We don't know, most or less. Copper coins were more valuable and durable than textiles. More valuable is something we don't know. Durable, yes, I do. Okay. According to the passage, the modern currency system shares all with the Tang Dynasty, except its currencies fluctuate in value over time. Yeah, the cloth thing, you know, based on how stained or whatever it is. It uses different material, this currency. Yeah, we have cash, check, debit cards. It uses different currencies or different situations. Yes, it is undergoing transformation. Uh, what did we read here? Um, yeah, we are shifting to electronic banking. So we are going under transformation now, but you know, in, nothing in the Tang Dynasty has been mentioned. 
during the time period which one of the following would not be an economically sound decision for a small purchase in the local market making the payment of upper weight of grain using coins cutting cutting cloth cutting cloth is not the sound decision as it says because a full bolt has a much more value so yeah we we'll mark this okay so we are tensions and sometimes conflict remain an issue in and between the 11 states in southeast asia china's rise as a regional military power and its claims of china have become an increasingly pressing security concern for many south asian states since the 1990s the security in southeast asia has seen both continuity and profound changes these concerns cause states from the outside the region to take an active interest in south asian security so china's rise as a regional military power and claim south china sea have become an increasingly pressing security concern and these concerns right so 2 and 4 are a mandatory pair right now let's see the security in north south east asia has seen both continuity and profound changes tension and sometimes can remain an issue continuity right this is the emphasizing part so we have Three and one is a pair. Now, what will it be? Will it be two, four, three, one, or three, one, two, four? Okay. Since the nineteen nineties, Southeast Asia would contain profound changes, tensions remain between eleven states. China's rise and claims have become increasing in many South Asian states. Okay, okay, okay. So. this word tensions and you know expanding on the word tensions so 3124 makes more coherent sense over here okay another paragraph relying on narrative structure alone indigenous significances of 19th century sand folk tales are hard to determine using the supernatural potency benign shamans transcend the levels of the sand cosmos in order to deal with social conflict and to protect material resources and enjoy a measure of respect that sets them apart from ordinary people selected tales reveal that they deal with a form of spiritual conflict that has social implications and concern conflict between people and living for dead benevolent shamans meaning can be elicited and the tales contextualized by probing beneath the narrative of verbatim original language records and exploring the connotations of highly significant words and phrases okay this is sort of on the higher end so sand folk tales is determined for the first time and rest we are expanding on it is what i feel so one should be a starting statement relying on narrative structure on indigenous significances of 19th century sand folk tales are hard to determine hard to determine meaning can be elicited and tales contextualized were probing beneath the narrative of verbatim original language records and exploring the connotations of highly significant words and phrases selected tales dead malevolent shamans and you know benign shamans so i think 1 4 3 2 clear links are visible okay for years movies and television series like csi paint and unrealistic picture of science of voices in the 1994 movie clear and present danger an expert listens to a brief 
recorded utterance and declared that the speaker is Cuban age, certified or fortified, educated in the Eastern United States. The recording is in fact a supercomputer that matches the voice to that of a suspect, concluding the probability of correct identification 90%. This sequence sums up a good number of mis misimpressions about forensic phonetics, which have led to errors in real life. Justice. Indeed, that movie scene exemplifies the so called CSI effect, the phenomenon in which judges hold unrealistic expectations of the capabilities of forensic science. Movies and televisions have led to the belief that the use of forensic science in legal investigations is robust and foolproof. Voice recognition started to feature prominently in crimes because of movies and television series. All the voice is often presented as evidence, its scientific basis can be shaky. Voice recognition as used in many movies and has been used in criminals in real life also. So we are talking about misimpressions. We are talking about unrealistic expectations. We are talking about movies, right? So you are out, you don't talk about movies. You can't say that because of this, they are used in this. They can be used here, then come here also, out. Between A and D, movie and television have led to the belief that use of forensic phonetics in legal investigations. So they did cause a lot of misimpressions, right? And they are talking about understanding expectations. So I feel A, to be the more sensible answer over here. For nearly a century, most psychologists have embraced one view of intelligence. Individuals are born with more or less intelligence potential, IQ. This potential is heavily influenced by heredity and difficult to alter. Experts and measurements can determine a person's intelligence early in life, currently from paper and pencil measures perhaps eventually from examining the brain in action or even scrutinizing his or her genome. Recently, criticism of this conventional measure has mounted. Okay, biologist asks if speaking of a single entity called intelligence coherent and question the validity of measures used to estimate heritability of a trait in humans who, unlike plants, animals, are not conceived and bred under controlled conditions. Biologists have questioned the view that intelligence is a single entity and the ways in which it is inherited. So, firstly, as per the passage, okay, we're not talking about inherit inheritance, we're talking about heritability of a trait. Okay, we're talking about heritability of a trait. So, biologists have questioned the long standing view that intelligence is a single entity and attempts to estimate its heritability. This is the right word. So shortlisted for now, you are eliminated. Have started questioning psychologists view. Okay, as a measurable immutable characteristic, no. Where is the question of heritability? Biologists have criticized. They have not criticized. Okay, they are asking or question. So this criticism word is incorrect. So we'll stick with B. As Soviet power declined, the world became to some extent multipolar and Europe strove to define an independent identity. What a journey Europe has undertaken to reach this point. It had in every century seen an internal structure invented new ways of thinking over the nature of international order. Now at the culmination of an era, Europe, in order to participate in it, felt obliged to set aside the political mechanisms through which it had conducted affairs. Impelled also had decided to push in the emergent unification of Germany, common currency, political structure, proclaimed a Europe a united whole free, adjusting the differences by peaceful mechanisms. Europe has consistently changed in keeping with the changing world order and has culminated in a Europe. The establishment of formal political structure was hastened by unification in Germany and emergence of a multipolar world. So, 
Okay, Europe has considered changing internal structure. Europe has chosen to lower political economic heterogeneity in order to adapt itself to an emerging multipolar world. So unification of Germany and the emergence did, I think this makes a lot more sense because you know, I can't really understand the heterogeneity. I mean, yeah, they use a common currency, but you know, lowering it, I am not sure. This doesn't have all the facts. And the change of internal structure, how is answered is, so you know, I'll stick with B in this particular thing. Okay, for feminists, the question of how we read it is strictly linked with the question of what we read. Elaine Showalter's critic of literary curriculum is exemplary of this work. Androcentric literature structures the reading experience differently depending on the gender of the reader. The documentation of the realization was the earliest task undertaken by feminist critics. Most specialized feminist inquiry into the activity of reading begins with the realization that the literary can be androcentric and this has profound damaging effect on women readers. Okay, this has provided I mean, women readers the documentation of the realization. Five four are related. Okay, so here is some gender, and here we're talking about feminism, you know, something common topic to one, two, four, and five, while well, it's not there in three. So that makes it a candidate for being odd, okay? Four and five are related that we understood. Five and two are related, literally. Literary is the word that relates those two, right? Androcentric literature, we're talking about the literary canon Okay, and I think it's not uh, the main topic is not about the gender. So, you know, we can't really define that. So I'll go with three. Odd one, what is this? Okay, I'll do the PJ first. It's easier always. Man has used poisons for assassination purposes ever since the dawn of civilization against individual enemies but also occasionally against armies these dangers dangers were soon recognized resulted into international declarations okay So two and four, I can see a relation, you know, there are these treaties and those treaties were all made in good faith. So two and four, yeah. Man has used poisons for assassination purposes ever since the dawn of civilization against individual enemies, occasionally against armies. The foundation of microbiology offered new prospects for those interested in biological weapons. Okay, offered new prospects. So you define the old one first. So one, three, is it one, three, two, four or two, four, three, one? Let's see. So two talks about these dangers. So it can't be a starting point. You know, manager is a better starting point. So one, three, two, four makes more sense. Talk was the most common way and claim men and women to suffer rules of the bondage to gain more agency than they're supposed to have. Even in conditions of extreme violence and freedom, their words remain ubiquitous, ephemeral, irrepressible, potentially transgressive, so yes, so so air oaths, great potency, freedom of speech.
okay this is sort of on a tougher end but i guess nearly time is up so i'll just mark this for review and let it be 23 attempts not bad let's see how we fare okay two were wrong okay thank you